we have good reason to think that uh, the various, first of all, we think that our mind has the various effects on the world around us. You know, I think to raise my arm and my arm goes up, you know, um, uh, obviously there's a lot more than that, but we, our mind has effects on the environment. However, those effects like my arm, Job going, chop, nigga. we can trace back the causes of that to, you know, stuff going on in my muscles and bones and then ultimately neurochemical stuff and stuff before that. Um, and the point is that we can have a sort of apparently complete causal explanation for that uh, event, my arm going up, that makes no appeal or to anything apart from physical goings on, stuff in my body, brain, environment, and so on. But if we think that my okay. brain or my mind is playing a role in producing that, then it's got to be part of that sequence, part of that physical goings on. That's a basic idea. Why do you think it's the mind actually doing that, and why not the brain? If you define the mind as the, de if you define the mind as the brain, then I don't disagree. Yeah. Why the brain? Not why is it not the brain? Not defining the mind as the brain. Oh, okay. The brain it's, just the brain. it's just the brain. It's just the brain that causes these processes. You know, like the sensory neurons send like impulses to motor mm -hmm. neurons, and they do the action. Right. Wait, Detroit. Sure yeah, that's a brain thing. That's a brain. Mind is part of that. Process. Yeah, my claim is that that's yes, that's a brain thing, but it's also a mind thing, right? Because so my mind is playing wow. a role in these events. It's like I'm thinking and intending and like deciding to raise my arm. Um, that's something that's a product of in part. I'm chopping to get to the argument. I already uh, gave you. Okay, okay if, uh... if all the mind's doing is just making a thought, then why is it actually you know responsible for the physical part raising the hand? Mind does a variety of things. That there's that you have thoughts, you have feelings, and then you, you you do things on the basis of your mind, right? Um, I decided to raise my arm, and then I did it. <laughs> that's partly a product of mental activity. If if that's under question, then we can have a different conversation. But I'm just taking it as a given that you know we sometimes do things as a matter of our mental. Uh, wait, do you try have a question? Okay. Wait, wait, see, 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 see. Uh, so, hold on, hold on, hold on. wait, uh, let me finish. Oh, let me finish. Oh, let me finish yeah. my conversation. See. Okay, okay. Yeah, Detroit, uh, what's called? I agree the mind is playing a role, but it's not a physical role. It's more so, like, letting us know that we gotta do this, and I think that's, like, non-physical and stuff. Uh, yeah, but I'm giving a reason to think that it is physical. Right? This was the whole point of the argument. Is that well, what's the reason? The I'm stuff that's playing a role... Look, we're talking about specific physical effects, right? Stuff like my my arm is a physical thing, it goes up, whatever. Other things, like I produce sounds, whatever. Physical effects. Those have uh, you know, prior conditions, prior causes, some of which we agree are like mental stuff, like my deciding to do that, my intending, and whatever. Um, uh, however, it's also the case that we can trace, um, in principle, we could trace the physical antecedents, the physical causes of that, kind of fully. You know, stuff going on in my body and brain and signals and so on. There's no need to, and it seems like there's no room for appealing to something else apart from those physical goings on. So if we think that A, the mind is playing a role, and B, only this physical stuff is playing a role, right? Then, conclusion, the mind has to be part of that physical stuff. That's the basic idea. I can make it more kind of formal, but um, I'm trying yeah, to be kind of quick. I just think that, okay, what do we define the mind as first, though? I'm not. I'm not. Really, I'm not uh, so interested in giving a general definition of the mind, but I think we have a general idea of like, well, we're talking about experiences. We can token them, like experiences I'm having right now. Sort of something that starts when you wake up from a dreamless sleep and uh, ceases when you return to a dreamless sleep. That sort of thing. Um. Uh, so, like, you know, I don't. I don't need a kind of. Yeah. So I'm including. I'm including consciousness there. I mean, intentional states are a bit more tricky. Um, so things like beliefs and desires and so on, because those might not always be uh, uh, conscious. But um, we kind of have a rough idea um, of consciousness and maybe other things like intention states. Okay, we're well, raising your hand, though. The thing that the consciousness mm -hmm. or the mind is doing is it makes you think, hey, I want to raise my hand. But what's actually doing the action, the physical part, is the motor neurons, like which you know control physical yeah, parts so of the, your body. So Good. So the motor, motor neurons are part of the process. I agree, but it's not only that, right? Um, I think we'll typically agree. I mean, again, if this is a different conversation, if you don't agree, um, that your mind is playing some role in that effect taking place. Right? You decided to raise your arm, yes, and your deciding resulted in the motor neurons firing and 
um, blah, 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 r resulting in the arm being raised. But the mind played a role. You decided that. It wasn't just like your mind was along for the ride. You just, oh, look, my arm, my arm happened to go up. <laughs> you know, no, that's not how it happened. Yeah, but okay, if you're dividing the mind as just the entire process, then yeah, I'd agree that's physical. But I just define the mind as what makes you think, hey, I want to like, arm up or something. I'm not defining the mind as that physical process. I'm defining. <laughs> I gave a rough, you know, understanding of what we're including in under the mental, like feelings and thoughts and so on, consciousness. And um, if we think that that plays a role, right? I, I, as I think, maybe we agree that that plays a role in the arm going up and other things that we do. Um, then my argument seems to go through, right? I mean. It's not the case that we have these thoughts and it's just like entirely independently of that, there's this physical process like in the body that's the results in the arm going up. No, the the mental uh, processing, the mental stuff plays a role in that uh, that outcome. But okay, empirically, we is... have good reason to think that it's only physical stuff that plays a role in that outcome. And so the mind has to be part of that physical stuff. Yeah, I agree it plays a role, but the role isn't actually tied in with physical. It doesn't actually make it uh, like... I just, it doesn't actually make the mind physical. Like, it's the brain that's doing these things and the mind. It's, it's like if I have, like, one of them machines that where, like, you drop a rock and then the rock moves in another machine and then it drops, like, a piece of paper or something, right? And I'm just, and the mind is just turning on the switch to do all that. So the mind isn't hey, actually. Villain, you thought you could sneak back at VC, villain? My bad, this, missing the whole point of the, this is missing the whole point of the argument. Like, you could have this view that, like, you know, the, the mind is out, out there with a controller and it's like controlling the body and that's how it works. Um, but you can have that view. That's a sort of a caricature of a common dualist view. But my argument uh, is specifically for the conclusion that no, the mind has to be part of this uh, physical goings on precisely because, again, I'm, I'm just repeating at this point, um, we can trace in principle the all of the kind of antecedent causes to these physical effects from the stuff going on in the body and the environment and so on without need for, and perhaps without room for, anything apart from the physical goings on. So if the, if the mind is playing this role in, you know, directing the body and producing effects and so on in the physical world, but only other physical stuff is producing those effects in the physical world, then the mind's got to be part of the physical stuff. Just pointing out this other model, this kind of dualist model, doesn't address the argument at all. Yeah, I agree the mind's part of the process. That's fine. Like, we just don't disagree then. Right. Okay. But if the mind's part of the process, resulting in these kind of physical effects, like the arm going up, and also the the process resulting in the physical and the arm going up and the other physical effects, just are these like physical sequences, like stuff going on in the, uh, you know, in the body, in the brain, in the in the physical environment, then you got to conclude that the mind is part of that um, physical goings on in the in the brain, perhaps. Yeah, are like, what, we debating the if the, the mind, mind itself is physical? Correct. Yeah, yeah, so let's say, like, I turn on a switch, and the switch allows, like, a machine to drop a piece of paper, right? Me turning on that switch doesn't mm -hmm. mean that, like, I guess I now have some sort of properties of dropping the paper. Okay, that was the machine's property. That's correct. Uh, that's, not, that's, the argument, okay. that's the argument that I'm making. So what, what's the relevance? I'm just question. saying, like, trigger, oh, wait, wait, triggering the brain to do this doesn't mean that mind actually oh, but if, has no, but if, if, look, of if you're triggering if your mind is something apart from the physical and it's triggering the brain to do something uh wh what's the room for that the point the, the point that i'm making is that all the stuff that's going on in the brain we can trace the kind of causes to that all the stuff is physical antecedents resulting in the kind of brain process that we have there's no room for something apart from that some like immaterial mind to be manipulating the brain uh, in principle well, one that would undermine just come like known physics, and two, in principle, that would be something we could study and to be detectable. But no, all we find is that there's these physical processes that uh, evolve according to known laws. It's just okay, let me just phrase on. it this way. I'll just phrase it this way. Why does the mind starting the process mean that it has the properties of the final result, which is that is physical? It's not. That's not the argument that I'm making. I'm not. I'm not saying because it starts this process that results in this physical effect. Therefore, the mind must share this property with the physical effect. No, rather, uh, A, we agree that the mind is part of this process and ultimately produces this physical effect. But B, we know like, empirically what these processes are, like they result in these physical effects. We can trace back 
okay, my arm went up. What, what was like sort of immediately sort of causally antecedent to that? Like certain muscle contractions and then motor neurons, stuff going on in the brain. What, what sort of manipulates the, uh, what affects the processes in the brain? Well, there's further brain processes, other things in the environment, other physical goings on, right? The point is that um, in this whole process, nowhere do we need to appeal to, and I would argue there's like no room to appeal to, um, something else apart from the physical world, like manipulating what's going on in the brain. But if there's nothing else manipulating what's going on in the brain and uh, or like elsewhere in that process, then uh, we have this entirely physical process that we think that our mind is a part of. And so our mind has to be part of the physical process. Yeah, but you agreed that the debate was if the mind itself is physical, like you can touch it and shit like that. So if you're just saying the mind is a part of the process and the result is it being physical, then what's really in question is if the mind causing all this makes the mind physical. No, no but that's, again, that's not my argument. My, what I just concluded right now is that the entire process resulting in, say, the arm going up is a physical process. This is something I think is supported empirically. And the, if we're already given that the mind is part of that process resulting in the arm going up, then it's got to be part of that physical process because it is just a physical process. In other words, I don't think the, the mind is part the of the physical process. process is the physical. Mind is physical. I don't think the entire process is physical. Well, okay, I mean, I, I've sort of given some brief reasons to think that it is, um, but it's like getting into the details of like physics is going to take more time. But like, in principle, do you think that, uh, well, like when we talk about my arm going out, okay, what's the sort of physical antecedents that? It's like molecules moving around, right? I mean, it's like the stuff going on in my arm and the rest of my body and my brain and the environment. And uh, we have very good reason to think that these are all physical processes that are sort of complete. Like you don't need to appeal to something else to explain the evolution of these material things. Um, there's not really room. There's not anything else manipulating um, how these things evolve in time. Can you can you touch the can you touch the mind? Well, if I think that roughly, uh, just to respond to quickly something in chat, mental processes are roughly brain processes, so it's, and in fact, you can sort of touch them by touching the brain. But it's kind of. Lady, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, is this is this a non-reductive view of the mind? So I don't. It, it's not. It is. It is a reductive view. Um, it, it's like an ontologically reductive. But I don't. Uh, I am an identity theorist, but. Uh, I don't I think a lot of talk in terms of reduction, emergence, and so on gets like um, a bit confused. So I tend to try to avoid it. But yeah, technically, it's a kind of reductive. Uh, well, this question was more so for people that may say something like um, physical processes cause mental events or something. Um, would you not agree that these sorts of things are overdetermined? Like if we posit that there's a causal relationship between physical events and mental events. Sorry. Yeah, of course there's causal relations between physical events and mental events. You, you know, yeah, but was, I'm going to have pain, right? Yeah, <laughs> so but why would that, that be overturned? Was, yeah, so the the reason that I think Kim gives for why it would be overdetermined is... Oh, okay. He, yeah. says, he says something like, okay, just suppose that I raise my hand. Um, you might argue that there's some sort of physical antecedent cause, maybe something in my neurology that causes it. Um, but also it might be caused due to my desire to want to raise my hand as well. Um, in which case it seems as if the physical event of me raising my hand has two sufficient causes. Um, and obviously we want to avoid such a, such a case. Um, uh, in which case uh, it seems as if... Oh yeah, go ahead. Well, I was, I was thinking of the like drainage. So like, uh, what was it that Kim uh, talks about with like, well, there's maybe a cause in terms of um, higher level brain processes perhaps but it also caused in terms of like the microstructure you know um so there's different levels of description of these things which seem to uh, both play a causal role but then are we getting causal determination um or just causes just reduced down to the fundamental level um i, I could talk about that or just the thing that you're bringing up right, you know, right now which seems like what um there could be some sort of uh intentional causal explanation in terms of our desires and motivations and whatever uh for why we um, produce some effect and also uh well there's also these other physical causes that aren't that <laughs> um well i might want more details of the the like, sample case but I, in principle i have no no problem with this in part because 
what we count as uh, causes or you know a legitimate causal explanation can include a lot of things. Um, so, like I don't know, take take an example that's much more complicated. Like, why did uh, what caused uh, you know Biden to drop out you know, of the of the of the race? Well, okay, this is this is a very complicated causal story that we might tell about um, interactions between people and so on. Or there's this like more narrow causal story we might tell about something going on in his brain or whatever. Um, uh, those that's not a sort of problematic overdetermination, I don't think, because um, we have good reason to think that all those processes are going on. Um, but uh, okay, see, I'm stealing your I mean, conversation. Anyway, but, you can continue it later, bro. But uh, Detroit, the only thing I have to say before yep. C gets back to talking is uh, what's it called? Mm -hmm. It's like an analogy where the like a butterfly flaps its wings, wings and stuff. Like it's a butterfly effect that can cause hurricanes, but it's not directly the butterfly. So the butterfly can't alone cause this hurricane, but it can with like these effects. All right, so the butterfly alone can't make a hurricane by flapping its wings. Is, it, is the analogy supposed to be that the mind alone cannot make this effect of the you know bodily effects? Yeah, it, it like I'm relies on a bunch of things, was. which doesn't make the mind itself immaterial. I mean, material, material. Yeah, but that wasn't again. That's, that's not, not addressing the argument. I agree that the fact that the mind um, has certain physical effects, or maybe requires certain other physical things to produce those effects, does that's not the argument that I'm making. I'm not saying that alone improves that the mind is physical. Um, I didn't say anything like that. Again, the argument is sort of this is this sort of empirical premise for thinking that the you know processes, the, the causes that result in things like my arm going up are these entirely physical processes. And then there's the kind of claim that you agree with about the mind that it sometimes plays a role. <laughs> it sort of is part of the sequence producing these effects. Um, take those two things together, well, <laughs> The mind is part of the process. The process is physical, so the mind is physical. That's the basic idea. And just saying that, well, the fact that the mind has these physical effects or requires other physical things to produce those effects doesn't show that the mind is physical. I agree. That's not the argument. Wait, wait, wait. This hinges off the entire process being physical, but it's not by definition. So it's all right, though. Yeah, see, you can get back to your conversation. Okay. See. I wasn't saying it was by definition. Talk.